All right, guys, so here's a video that a lot of you are interested in uh, seeing uh, the uh, Runcam MIPI camera. Uh, not a lot of videos on this one, and this one is compatible with the DJI FPV system. It's um, unknown how long it will be compatible. It's, uh, this is the second Runcam camera that uh, is compatible with the DJI system. The first one, the Runcam Racer 4, was um, pretty pretty bad image quality in my opinion. I didn't even bother reviewing that one because it just didn't look very good. Um, not very competitive. I mean, the Nebula Nano was considered the worst DJI camera and the Runcam Racer 4 was quite a bit worse than that. So I didn't even bother looking at that one, but this is their second um, try at this. This is a 19 millimeter micro-sized camera. And uh, unfortunately it, is only 16 by 9 and uh, there's no low latency mode so basically it's 720p 60 frames per second no 120 frames per second so um, it is not in the same class as the nebula pro or the dgi camera so it's going to be more similar to the uh, nebula micro or the nebula nano basically so but it's got a different image quality and you'll see that in the flight footage but let me just show you the camera itself and sort of how it compares to the other cameras and as I said it's a 19 millimeter camera standard mounting m2 mounting holes but you can see the, the the nose is quite a bit shorter than most of the other cameras so here is the nebula micro camera you can see here line up the, the holes here be hard to see here but see how much shorter it is when you line up the holes I'd say here about two maybe two and a half millimeters shorter when you mount it in a frame and I did mount it into this um, GIP RC uh, the uh, what is this the um, uh, smart 35 this has the nubby the na nano camera in here and when I stuck that in here, it was very much recessed. And you'll see in the flight footage that the uh, frame corners show up in the video because it's a fairly um, wide-angled camera. So you're going to probably have to consider that in terms of what frames you're going to want to put it in. And if you compare it to the, this is the, the Nebula Nano. If you line up the holes here, you can see again, it's going to be sitting further back in any type of frame that this camera will go into compared to the frames that are designed for the Cadex cameras. So that's going to be a pretty big consideration on what you decide to put this in. That's why I pulled it back out of the, the Smart 35 because I don't like the frame in my video and it also kind of blocks the view. It's not, you know, being, weird, being able to see where you're going. So I'm going to put this into something else for further testing. Again, here is the Nebula Pro camera. Again, you can see how much further back it is. And then just all the uh, lenses are the same there between the Nebula Pro and the DJI camera. Let's see how the lenses compare. And this is the DJI camera, of course, <clears throat> totally different mounting system for this. And again, it sits further back in the frame where the mount hole is. So you can see right there. Now, this MIPI connector here, which is standard, you can buy the connector with the camera from Runcam if you want, or you can just buy the camera by itself. And you know, obviously, it'll you just have to disconnect the connector from the camera that's already in your existing system. You can plug it in here. And this is the bottom here, right here. This is the bottom of the camera. That's the top of the camera, and the connector will come up like this. So let me show you a little photo of what that look, it looks like. There's no secure there's no there's something that secures the connector onto the board here like there's no part or anything like that like on the Cadex cameras there's this little piece of the board back here and then that holds the connector in place so it won't pop off in a crash this does not have that i don't know maybe that's how they saved the five dollars the price difference i think is this is a little bit cheaper um so something you'll have to do put some glue on there or come up with some sort of a 3D printer part perhaps to secure that connector down, otherwise it'll pop off in a crash. All right, so here's how much it weighs. So it's 6.33 grams, and the 
going to be the micro 6.09, maybe the pro 5.92, maybe the nano 4.72, and this is the uh, full DJI camera 9.44. All right, so just to uh, talk about the uh, flight footage here as I um, show it to you. Um, in my opinion, the uh, footage looks like it has um, a better sharpness setting. It's not as sharp or as pixelated as a shimmer compared to the Nebula, especially the Nebula Nano camera. The Nebula Micro camera is a little bit better in that aspect compared to the Nebula Nano. Uh, the colors are really different. so. If you don't like the sort of oversaturated look of the Nebula Nano, um, uh, this one is kind of reminds me of like the Runcam 4 or the Runcam 5. It's the, you know, Runcam, they don't go for super saturated colors. Their color is a little bit more natural looking. However, they, all the sen Runcam sensors seem to have like this sort of magenta or pink hue on the whole image which I personally am not particularly fond of, but uh, some people say they don't notice it or they don't care about that, but I, I noticed it on this camera as well. You don't get as much of the sort of the red flare that you get on the Nebula Nano lens. The Swiss lens doesn't have that, uh, but you have this sort of pink hue on the whole image here and there, it kind of comes in and out depending upon the angle of the sun. I'm not sure if that's from the lens or if that's a sensor or not, but that's uh, characteristic of a lot of Runcam products. The um, but the in terms of the colors, this you know it's not as saturated. It's less contrasty, so it's, there's less contrast in the in the overall image. So mm, I don't know if that's necessarily better or worse for flying. Um, I think it looks better in terms of video, and I don't know if you want to show your flight footage, but it's perhaps not as good for flying. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. The the ground definitely looks way different. Uh, not as dark. Um, especially on the contrast side, uh, more detail in the shadows. The ground colors are a little bit more realistic looking, in my opinion. The field of view is, again, it's a 169 aspect ratio, again, just like the uh, Nebula Nano and Nebula Micro, but the field of view is a little bit wider than the Nebula Nano um, and Nebula Micro. It's like, uh, I think this is like 100 and I forget all. I'll uh, put up the numbers up on the screen here, but the it's a little bit wider than Nebula Nano, but a little bit less wide than the Nebula Micro version that comes from Eusheen with the 1.66 millimeter lens. That one's a uh, that one's wider both vertically and horizontally compared to this camera. So if you're looking for a little bit more field of view, especially vertically, this is going to be a little bit better than Nebula Nano uh, and the Nebula Micro with the standard DJI lens, but it's going to be less than the 1.66 millimeter lens from the Eusheen version of the Nebula Micro. Uh, this one is just DJI only. You can't change any of the settings like you can on the Nebula Micro. So you can definitely do more with in terms of manipulating the settings on the Nebula Micro side um, to reduce the sharpness and contrast and get better colors. So there's um, with this one with the with this run cam camera, you just have the whatever that they decided to pick, and that's it. So that's pretty much it, you know, um, in terms of whether or not this is going to work down the road, I don't know. My feeling is that as long as it, as, an, as the Vista and the Air Unit work with any of the Nebula Micros and Nebula Nano cameras, they'll continue to work with the Runcam cameras until they do a hardware change. I think that's going to require a hardware change. But, but when they do that, if they kill off the compatibility with the Runcam cameras, it'll also kill off the compatibility with the Nebula Nano and Nebula Micro cameras, as, as far as I can tell, because there's no other way. I mean, I don't know how they're going to be able to tell the difference because it just uses a standard connector here, and there's nothing special in terms of the video data being sent back and forth. It's not encrypted. So that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, yeah, let me know if you want to see any additional coverage of this particular camera. Uh, if you want to see how this compares to the Nebula Micro and Nebula Na yeah, Nebula Pro and Nebula Micro. I will link some other videos that I flew at the same spot. You can, you know, sort of compare how it looks and, and, and you can get an idea of uh, whether or not you feel you agree with what I, I said about the, my opinion on how, what the image looks like. You know, I think this is definitely better than Runcam Racer, whether or not it's better than the Nebula Micro, kind of, uh, I don't know, we'll have to see. Uh, I like the fact that you can change the settings of the Nebula Micro. Um, 
you know, even though it is on, you have to do it on the analog side, it will cut, it'll, we will carry over to the DJI side and you can get a nicer picture on the Nebula Micro, in my opinion, than this camera. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.